Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs video which can be of use for your upcoming RBI grade B and RBI assistant examination as well. Okay, so guys in your RBI assistant examination as you would know that there are 40 questions and the level of these questions is similar to the level that is asked in the phase 1 of RBI grade B and you know what source, source you have to follow for the RBI grade B examination. This is guys spotlight or the daily current affairs uh, video series uh, that you can use for the phase one. Now similarly for the RBI assistant phase two, you have to use spotlight magazine and daily current affairs videos only. Be the source of videos, whatever source you would use, whatever source of magazine you would use. My intention behind suggesting you spotlight or daily current affairs videos here is to to inform you that guys you don't have to go for the phase 2 like current affairs like ESI ke peechhe nahi jana hai, aapko PIB ke peechhe nahi jana hai, okay. These are the sources that you would use for your RBI grade B examination. For RBI assistant you have to use spotlight kind of a magazine, okay. You can also use spotlight only because spotlight is specifically prepared keeping in mind the RBI examination pattern, okay. So now that was the introduction part of the video. Now let's begin with the first question. What was the national maternal mortality ratio during 2017 to 2019? So guys, recently a special bulletin has been released by the Registrar General of India. And in that special bulletin, the maternal mortality ratio information was given for 2017 to 2019. Now the national level MMR stands at 103 and guys this is an improvement I will show you the improvement okay so here you can see as in 2014 to 16 130 was the MMR in India now it has reduced to 103 and here you can consistently see the improvement over the years okay so this was the national maternal mortality ratio okay so now we have these states with have the highest maternal mortality, mortality ratio and among these states Assam guys is at the top we have Assam with 205 MMR then Uttar Pradesh 167, Madhya Pradesh 163, Chhattisgarh 160, Rajasthan 141. Then we have another list here that is the list of states with lowest MMR where Kerala stands at the first position and in many socio-economic indicators Kerala is the one that always takes the first place. Then we have Maharashtra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Andhra both have the same MMR and then we have Jharkhand and Gujarat. So guys these are the uh, list provided by the special bulletin of the states with highest and lowest MMRs. Now, what is the thing to understand here? We have understood the list. Basically, there is nothing to understand in a list. But we have just discussed the list. But the most important point here is the targets of MMR. Okay. So, according to the National Health Policy of 2017, 100 per lakh live births by 2020 is the target in relation to the MMR. Okay. Then we have Sustainable Development Goal Target which states 70 per lakh live births by 2030. So guys these are the two targets and clearly from the list that is given here so you can clearly see that these seven states are fulfilling the SDGs target also. So SDG states that you should have 70 uh, per lakh live births and we have Kerala 38, Maharashtra th Kerala 30, Maharashtra 38, Telangana 56. Tamil Nadu Andhra Pradesh at 58, then Jharkhand 61 and Gujarat at the exact word that is 70. So these seven states along with your um, Karnataka and Haryana, these nine states guys fulfill the national health policy target of 100 per lakh life births and these seven states particularly fulfill the SDG target. So here guys this becomes all the more important from your phase one point of view. And also this can be asked in your ESI exam also in your phase 2 of RBI grade B. So prepare this list, memorize this list, both the lists that are present here and the targets in relation to the MMR. Okay, now let's move on to the next part of this uh, question which states the, which mentions the states which have improved the most. So we have Uttar Pradesh, however the overall MMR is still very high and above the national health policy target but still the improvement that Uttar Pradesh has 
shown over the years is remarkable then we have rajasthan bihar punjab odisha so these guys are the five states that have shown the most improvement in declining the maternal mortality ratio in the states so here guys i have given you the list of the states and the entire information concisely from the phase 1 point of view okay so but this also reminds me that nfhs 5 has already been released by the government of india so it is your responsibility to cover the nfhs 5 your census is guys the a uh, very predominant of document that you have to cover all the time whenever you are covering uh, whenever you are going for any examination so census hai nfhs 5 hai and similar kind of uh, census datas okay are important now that was all about the first question let's move on to the second question how many river basins are covered in the rupees 19000 crore afforestation plan of the ministry of environment forest and climate change and ministry of jal shakti so basically what has happened these two ministries have collaboratively launched this afforestation plan and according to this plan they will basically afforest the basin of the rivers okay so 13 major rivers have been selected and the afforestation activities will take place across the basin of these 13 major rivers okay so here the right answer is 30 now what are the benefits of doing this so guys clearly first benefit is the ecological benefit soil erosion will be prevented then ground water replenishment will be there okay and the river rejuvenation will also be there if there is afforestation guys wetlands work as the kidneys of the world kidneys of the nature you can say kidneys of earth whatever you want to say why are the wetlands called the kidneys of the earth because they clarify the impurities uh, that are there in the uh, ground water as as well as they work as the carbon sink also okay thus wetlands are known as the kidneys of the world similarly if afforestation is there if the green environment is there across the basins then it will definitely rejuvenate the river and the area surrounding to it so now let's discuss the specific benefits that can become question for you in your upcoming exams so first of all through this afforestation plan the area that would be brought under the forest cover would be increased by 7000 square kilometer approximately then you have this much of amount generated from the non timber and other forest produce so obviously forest would be there then we would have the forest produce we will we would have different kind of products coming out from the forest and these minor forest produce will later be sold by the people living in the adjoining areas okay thus they will they would earn a livelihood and that livelihood would amount to rupees 4400 449 Uh, crores four hundred forty nine crores, not four thousand. Sorry. So this entire activity is going to generate employment of three forty four million man days, guys. This is an important figure. Please remember this figure because they can directly ask you this figure, okay, in the examination. Now, apart from this, the major benefit of this afforestation plan is that it is going to help. in fulfilling india's international targets specifically related to environment okay so what kind of targets are we specifically targeting here through this afforestation plan first is that we are going to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of co2 equivalent okay that is guys the um, that is the commitment india has made under the paris agreement i am not saying that this 19000 afforestation rupees 19000 crore worth of afforestation plan is going to build this much of carbon sink no this is guys the target that india has committed to the paris agreement and this plan is going to help india in fulfilling this target okay i am not saying that the complete target will be achieved through this afforestation plan okay but however little contribution the uh, this afforestation plan will give to this target it is guys important it matters next is that this afforestation plan will help it in fulfilling the restoration target that india has set for itself and that target is restoration of 26 million hectares of degraded land by the year 2030 okay and halt the biodiversity loss by 2030 
so guys here since this word is this word is here so i have a question for you all and that question is when do we celebrate the world biodiversity day if you are telling me the date of the day then also mention the theme of the latest day okay the latest theme of this day so guys we have talked about the rivers across which this afforestation plan will be developed but which rivers are going to be covered under this plan we have read the number 13 but these 13 have a specific name so let's discuss them first of all you need to know that these 13 rivers collectively cover a basin area of 18 lakh 90110 square kilometers which is 47.45% of the geographical area in india okay so this is again a very important figure the total length including 202 tributaries of these 13 major rivers is approximately 42830 kilometers okay this uh, guys is not very significant in comparison to the other two statements that are mentioned here then these are the rivers that will be covered under this program okay now guys technical support so indian council of forestry research and education which is based in dehradun is going to provide the technical support to the ministries in conducting this afforestation plan now guys this is not the very new opportunity for this organization this organization my friends was already engaged with the ministries in creating the detailed project reports of this afforestation plan yes the plan was already there in the minds of the ministry and the work was already done by this uh, organization basically the uh, feasibility reports were there that were assessed by this organization and now we have launched this afforestation plan so here you just have to remember that this is the organization that is providing the technical support to the ministry okay i hope that we are good here so let's move on to the next question guys if you feel any kind of uh, trouble in understanding anything you are very uh, welcome to ask your questions in the comment section below or you can pitch me uh, on the telegram channel as well you can uh, ask your doubts there also So guys the next question is where has AI and robotics technology park opened its innovation lab for startups so here guys the right answer is IISC Bangalore that is Indian Institute of Science Bangalore now what is this so basically the AI robotics and technology uh, park is an indian organization and indian non profit organization which was founded by iisc itself in 2020 and now guys do remember that in this park the funding is not only provided by the state government or the center government but both the governments are the stakeholders in this organization okay basically this organization provides support to the startups that are already engaged in the ai segment ai and robotics segment as we can decipher from its name itself so recently it has established an innovation lab at the premises of this iisc institution which is located in bangalore and what would be the primary function of this lab basically this lab would provide support to the msmes and their products okay it will help the msmes in developing the innovative products in the ai and technology ai and ro uh, robotics technology segment and when the product is developed then it is also going to provide support to the startups in the long run as well okay by way of investing in the startups so this is guys the entire function of this innovation lab and this ai robotics technology park so basically i have summarized the entire news for you now let's have a look at the nitty gritties of this report as well sorry this uh, news as well so the lab is basically based on three areas or it will focus on three areas digital and physical connectivity using 5g and drones making healthcare services available at people's door and using ai for inclusive learning so basically this lab is going to offer these services and the startups that are de developing products in these areas will be promoted by the innovation lab clear now we have Uh, another point that states that IISC, along with IIT Kanpur, IIT Jodhpur, University of Alto in Finland, and ICMR, and the All India Institute of Medical Research, Medical Sciences, all these institutions are going to provide help to the innovation lab. Okay. 
so these are going to collaborate with the innovation lab do remember this thing and apart among all these in universities this is the most important institution okay on which a question can be framed in your examination next point is that us dollar 100 million worth of venture capital fund has also been set aside by this art park and the basic purpose of this fund is to use this money for investment in the startups okay as i told you that not only the product will be promoted but these startups are themselves will be promoted by the innovation lab and this art park in the long run by way of investment okay so this path is going to invest in the startups at the first art park innovation summit that was recently held the first product that was developed by the labs or the promoted by the labs that is a drone ambulance was also unveiled now guys this is a very insignificant information that i should say i have just mentioned it for your information purpose so now let's move on to the next question how many components are present in the customized crash course program for covid warriors so here two is the right answer let's have a look at the news itself so recently ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship the minister of which is dharmendra pradhan has informed the lok sabha that the enrollment in this program basically the customized crash course program for covid warriors that was launched under the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana 3.0 now the enrollments under this program has reached 0.18 million these people have enrolled in it and out of these 0.15 million candidates have completed the classroom training so there should be a question in your mind first of all that whether is this data useful for us so my answer here is no but the news attached to this entire data is significant that is this program okay so we are going to discuss this program in detail so first of all it was launched in 2021 and it is administered by the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship the purpose it is very evident from the name itself that is to provide training to the covid warriors so that they can be equipped with the modern uh, techniques to handle the covid patients okay or basically not even the modern techniques but the uh, but the efficient ways in which they can handle the COVID patients. So the training is going to be provided in six healthcare job roles. Now you guys, this is an important point here. Six job roles are selected for this uh, program. Now these job roles are basic care support, home care support, advanced care support, sample collection support, emergency care support and medical equipment support. So all of these supports pertains to the COVID-19, okay? Whether the patient is quarantined at the home, so there the COVID warriors would need the training of the home care support, okay? So similarly, we have six areas of training. Now the components are two. First is the fresh skilling that will be done through short-term training followed by three months on the job training. So this is guys the first component. And the second component is seven days upskilling program for the trained candidates, okay? So this much is enough for this, uh, for this news, okay? So now we are going to move on to the next question. Where is the world's first peace center located? So recently this peace center has been inaugurated and you would be glad to know that it is in India, Gurugram, Haryana, India. Now let's have a look at the organization. So Ahimsa, Ahimsa Vishwa Bharti is the organization that has developed this first peace center of the world in Gurugram Haryana. Okay, and this organization was, is, uh, was established by Jain Acharya, Dr. Lokesh Ji. Okay, so basically he's, uh, he's a very prominent person and he's also known as the ambassador of peace. Okay, so he has done such a um, tremendous work towards promoting peace. Next question is, where is the Halari donkey breed found in India? Okay, so here we have Gujarat as the right answer. Guys, whenever you come across any animal or any tree species, any flower species or any species on earth, whenever you come across any such species in the newspaper, your responsibility is to cover the news first and then the associated facts related to the species as well okay because we know that nowadays the the examiner tends to go into depth okay and too much depth now this halari donkey is basically an important uh, livestock in the saurashtra region of 
Gujarat. So basically, Jamnagar and Dwarka are the two districts where uh, the halari donkey is used very rampantly. Okay. So Bharat, Bharwad and Rabari pastoralist communities use this donkey species for carrying their luggage in my, during the migration and for other purposes as well. Now guys, there is another fact attached to this donkey and that is that their population is decreasing because first of all, there is no uh, caretakers for these donkeys and there is also a reason for that. Why the people don't want to adopt these donkeys because there is no incentivization in rearing these donkeys as well as there is no opportunity for the uh, for the farmers related who are rearing the donkey okay so uh, in selling the donkey's milk in the market so that is guys uh, the loophole here in the system because of which the population of these donkeys are decreasing now guys that is about the halari donkey but why was it suddenly in the news let's discuss that so recently union minister of fisheries animal husbandry and dairy he addressed the Saurashtra Maldhari Sammelan, which was organized by the Sajivan, the Center for Pastoralism at Upleta in Rajkot district of Gujarat. So this is guys the news for which the Halari donkey was in news. So the theme of the Sammelan is fostering pastoralism in Saurashtra conservation and its sustenance. Guys, this theme is important. Such kind of questions are regularly framed in the examination. So please pay attention to the theme. Now guys, apart from this, during the Sammelan, Another book, Pastoral Weeds of India, that was compiled by the Sahajivan organization in itself. They, this book was released by Purshottam Dubala. Okay, so do remember this fact as well. Now we are on the last question of the day, which institute administers the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. So here Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India is the right answer. But again, the question should arise in your mind that why are we discussing about it? So first of all, let me inform you about the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, then I will tell you the news associated with it. So Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India located in Ahmedabad is administering this platform and this basically is an assessment, is a survey based research, okay? This Global Entrepreneurship Monitor conducts the research on entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship ecosystems across the world. So that is the basic purpose and the information regarding the GEM. Now let's discuss why was it in the news. So recently, Minister of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, that is Dharmendra Pradhan, has given a really important data in the Lok Sabha. Okay, so what is that data? First of all, that data has been cited from the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. So from here, the question was asked from me. Now what is the data? So Pradhan has mentioned that the total entrepreneurial activity rate in India has increased to 14.4% in 2021 from 5.3% in 2020. What is entrepreneurial activity rate? So guys, it is the percentage of adults who are aged between 18 to 64 who are starting or running a new business. So this is guys termed as the entrepreneurial activity rate and it has increased to 14.4%. Guys, this kind of random data that are given by the ministers in reply to a question in the Lok Sabha are asked very rampantly in the examination. Therefore, I told you that this is the very, very important data. Plus, it is very interesting as well that uh, finally the entrepreneurship is now taking up, uh, is now being taken up in India. Okay. So, net data that this, uh, that the minister has given in the Lok Sabha is that the established business ownership rate has also increased to 8.5% in 2021 from 5.9% in 2020. Now, what is this? So, this is basically the percentage of adults who are aged between 18 to 64, but these adults are currently the owner management of an established business. Okay. So, this is guys the established business ownership rate and guys the entrepreneurial activity rate is basically the people who are engaging in new businesses. Okay. So, as per the GEM, India has become the third largest startup ecosystem in the world after US and China with over 60,000 startups and in 2021 alone, 42 unicorns were created. So, guys, this is guys not a new data. Many reports have given such similar data. So, again, but this is important. Do remember the number of unicorns that were created in 2021. But now, 
uh, I guess this has also become insignificant because we have again a lot of unicorns that are coming up in 2022 only so this data has definitely become obsolete now so guys that was all for today i hope that you have enjoyed the video and if you have really enjoyed it then do not uh, feel shy or conjusi mat karna like kar do share kar do subscribe to the channel ko thank you so much for watching this video and yes if you have any doubt again i would say feel free to ask me in the comment section or on the telegram channel thank you have a good day Good luck for your exams.